back to Terrible at Fishing, everybody. Well, this week has been a wild and crazy week. We had the Derby on Saturday, and that was a lot of fun. I had over 100 people, and everybody got prizes. What was caught? Well, a whole lot of perch. <laughs> a very predictable, one foot off bottom, small, tiny little jig, little worm, maybe power bait, get in and start pulling them up. The winner was 158 fish, so good for them. The biggest a trout um, also was 18 and a half inches, 2.12 pounds, and this was all at Lake of the Woods. We did not get any size of bass uh, turned in, so we really worked with the trout as well as the perch. So the cold water is here, and cold water fishing means cold water fish. So you can now catch these fish um, in the shallows. As for the um, the kokanee are just starting pre-spawn. Saw some some sockeye kokanee at Lake of the Woods, a little bit of red on them. Uh, so they're going to be coming up onto the main ramp in a couple weeks. If you want to see something absolutely wonderful and stupendous and just a wonderful sight, uh, eh, second week of October, you should be able to see hundreds if not a thousand of these kokanee on the main ramp on the rocks you can just walk out there if you want get your feet wet sort of kick them aside but you know they're just a whole bunch of them um, and then the browns will be coming up and hitting those so that is actually starting right now um, well you know the pre-spawn is you're going to start seeing them jump out of the water uh, like little dolphins in schools um, in the next couple of weeks and then as they move up into the shallows to spawn. And you wonder, you know, do the spawn actually spawn fish? Well, the answer is no. Uh, there's a, in a lake, sockeye salmon, uh, or kokanee, as uh, it's called because they're landlocked, there's no aeration, you know, no turning of the, um, there's no current to turn the eggs. So they just don't hatch. So, you know, the, the, the kokanee is basically going through the motions and without uh, any kind of fruitful results. But, yeah, it's still fun to see. They start, like all salmon, when they st start their spawn, they do not eat. They starve themselves to death. So, if you catch one, that's ah, purely off of instinct. Their meat isn't very good, though. It just isn't. So that's kind of like the fishing report at the very beginning. Let's talk about the week. Um, this week has been rather crazy. I mean, I, uh, terrible at fishing in conjunctions with Lake of the Woods. We did the uh, Derby on Saturday and I made lots and lots and lots and lots of baits, all I had made in order to give away. I did have the ugliest fish. By the way, I mean, I didn't, but you know, somebody brought up what I had considered the ugliest fish. He must have pulled that poor little bass's lip out because he had he had a, a underbite that you would not believe. So I gave, you know, so he won a, a reel. <laughs> he won a reel. Um, and I gave him a really nice reel and uh, for the ugliest fish. So, but I want to thank Lake of the Woods for having me. And um, I was going to have some books for book signing. They didn't arrive in time. Of course, you're always a day late, dollar short. I got my keychains and my books <laughs> on Monday. I know. Go figure. Um, so, <laughs> go figure. See me on uh, Terrible Fishing on YouTube. Uh, and you'll see some stuff that I got in this week. The... Uh, I, you guys know that I'm starting to um, learn how to fly fish, and I want to learn how to tie flies. So I went online, and I went and looked at these, these fly tying workbenches. Basically, they're just little workstations that are fairly portable. And I went to a business in town that I'd never gone to. It's called Cook's um, Wood, I think cooks and basically they deal in 
exotic wood. Now, I haven't bought a piece of wood in ages, to be honest. I mean, besides two by fours or whatever. Um, but, you know, when we were kids, you know, in the 70s in high school, we had wood shop, <laughs> okay? We, bought, we had our choice between three different woods. We had mahogany, oak, and pine. Back then, we were just making skateboards and gun racks. <laughs> That's pretty much what we were making back then. Yeah, yeah, we actually made gun racks. Back then, yeah, yeah, we, it was different. It was different. And it was like a buck a foot, you know, it wasn't very much. Um, so, and a lot less for pine. So, but if you wanted the harder woods, it was like a buck a foot. So I go to Cook's and it's over by Wendy's off of Main, uh, 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 East Main Street there. And it's just, uh, well, it's absolutely wonderful. <laughs> to be honest, is the coolest place. Ran by the, you know, the family there and a uh, young man, Hunter, um, 19, you know, basically he's, reminds me of my own kid. He's 19, 6'4", six, six, you know, real quiet. He was happy to help me find a piece of wood. I had no idea that wood was so expensive nowadays. <laughs> I really didn't. Uh, so I went over to the scrap area. And I, I'll tell you, the scrap area in exotic woods is just beautiful. Just beautiful. I wanted to make, I, I just wanted a base so I could I could epoxy it and just make a, a basically a, a workstation for flying ties. Because I got my, my vice in um, this week. And I wanted something, yeah, I just wanted to make it pretty. You know, someplace that I could put, uh, you know, hooks and beads and whatever. And I found this one piece, it's a piece of redwood, um, sort of a, 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 a cut of it and it's sort of raw and if you go to my YouTube channel you'll see what I made I think it's beautiful just absolutely I would I mean Cook's is I wouldn't go there I mean expecting a dollar a foot <laughs> evidently wood got more expensive and he's got some incredible incredible wool i mean if you just want to make a table or something like that um he's got you know wood for gun stocks and stuff like that i mean he's got everything there i've never been in cooks before and i was well it kind of took my breath away let alone it smells absolutely wonderful but everybody there was really nice that's what i love about small towns i mean it's just family-run businesses you know, a lot of these, and evidently this guy's, you know, he's got a really good website, and he uh, uh, sells wood, he ships everywhere. Um, so if you just go to, uh, you know, go to his website, and uh, I think it's Cook's Wood, um, I don't know what the name of the website is, but uh, wow, 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 wow. Um, so I want to thank them. You know, I went to the scrap area there and I figured, okay, I'll find something there. And I found something there. And uh, the dad, um, he uh, gave me a price and, and uh, bought it. <laughs> and I bought a couple other little pieces. Um, and I got the most beautiful fly tying workstation. Now, it is stunning, actually. Um, I epoxied so that base is glass, looks like glass, and with a rough edge to it, and the, the, the burl and the, the grain in it is just stunning. I guess this was a scrap piece because it has two, um, you know, ruptures in it. Um, so, I mean, it's they're through and through, which just gives my base just a little bit more character. And it's just, it's just gorgeous really 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 gorgeous i cannot wait to to start tying flies <laughs> i really just can't wait to start tying flies i got a i got i got stuff coming in uh, i got on an estate sale and um and so that should give me everything i need to uh tie fly. i got this book i got a book 
on how to fly tie, uh, tie flies. And it's Fly Tying for Beginners is the name of the book. How to Tie 50 Fail Safe Flies. It's by um, Peter Gathercole. 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 G-A-T-H-E-R-C-O-L-E. Now, the neat thing about this book, it got really good reviews over on Amazon, and I bought it. And it's kind of like a fly tying course. And then you can, you can choose, it's got a fly directory with references to the page that they make them. And then um, it, you can, it'll tell you what fish it'll catch, what type of fly, if it's a floating or sinking fly. It gives you the recipe, um, which is all the little pieces to, the, to make the fly. So if I wanted, you know, this becomes my shopping list if I wanted to make um, these flies. And then step by step with pictures on every step of the way in making the fly. So it teaches you the techniques and then it goes into, you know, all these things about making flies. And it's spiral bound which and hard bound. So I love the fact it's spiral bound because it'll last longer and I could just stick it up on my, um, my, uh, my fly tying station and look at it. <laughs> Try to do what it tells me to do. Um, so it's actually a very, it looks like a very, very nice book. So um, and it's called Fly Tying for Beginners by Gather Cole. And uh, if you're trying to start, you know, if you're, if you're trying to start tie flying, um, this looks like a very, very good book. It has really good reviews. So um, as I get my stuff and I start tying flies, um, I'll give you an update on whether this book is really that awesome or not. But it looks good. I mean, and, and it's durable, which is going to be really nice because I'll be using that book a lot and I love the fact that the fact that it's a uh, spiral bound within a hard cover so and then everybody tells me the most important thing about fly tying is organization that's why I made the little station but organization and so I'm going to make sure that everything is in their proper place at least at the beginning if you look in my shop, I'm not the most well-organized person in the world, so I will probably have a hard time with this in a couple of weeks. So, but uh, I'm having, uh, I, I've been getting a lot of stuff in this last week. I, I've been shopping estate sales. Have you guys ever shopped estate sales? Yeah, I know. They're pretty cool. I mean, you should always go in the garage, right? You know? But, I mean, I'm an outdoors guy, so I've been shopping estate sales, and I've been getting some pretty good stuff. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> my fly tying adventure will begin, and I will fill you guys in next week as I try to tie my first fly I know how cool is that guys oh and I went to a uh, uh, I went to treasures um, thrift store in town and I saw this old school house desk you know um, children's desk and he said it had a price on it and I went to the guy and I go I has got the wrong price he goes what do you mean it's got the wrong price I go come here I go, that's got to be the wrong price. And he goes, no, that's the right price. I got a school, uh, an old children's school desk, you know, with the cubby and everything. 99 cents. Ha, 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 ha. love thrift stores. <laughs> 99 cents. I got that. It's right there. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned for our next segment. Um, we're going to hear from our commercial uh, supporters and we'll be right back all right welcome back to terrible at fishing we're going to talk a little bit about 
spinning spin cast reels. I know. So I when we all grew up, we started with an old Zepco, didn't we? I mean a spin caster. Basically we just pressed the button and cast it. Um, and so <clears throat> at an estate sale I bought some spin casters. And you would think uh, that you would grow out of a spin caster. The spin caster is for kids. Well, a spin caster is not anymore. They, they just are not for children anymore. They make high-end spin casters. And Zepco, we're going to review this Zepco Bullet um, 30. Zepco Bullet 30. 30 and uh, I think it's model number ZB30A and this thing has something on it that I've never seen before and it is well it's heavy okay so it's made out of a, a, a billet aluminum that's why well, they probably call it the bullet and the Zepco is a brand that's been around, well, it's been around forever. And they're collectibles, um, Zepco Reels. They've been around since, I think, 1949. Um, I think the uh, company's been around, yeah, 1949. And we've started, probably learned on a Zepco 33, which is still a model sold today, believe it or not. What's a spin caster? Well, a spin caster is sort of, well, it, it was made to be simple, very simple. You press the button and you cast it. That's what you do. <laughs> it's a one button operation. That's what a spin caster is. There's no bail to open on it. There's no, you know, spool that you have to ride your finger on like you would a bait caster. This thing is the easiest reel that you could possibly fish with. This is something that everybody at any age would love to fish with. They cast a long ways. They do. Um, this particular reel, the Zebgo Bullet, is it, one thing. It's probably its drawback is that it's heavy. But the, the plus to it is it's got a high gear ratio. Um, this thing brings in just under 30 inches per turn. It's a 5 to 1 gear ratio, so I don't understand how a 5 to 1 can actually get 30 inches of, of line, but it does. And it's just a very fast reeling um, uh, um, reel just is. They come pre-spooled too with um, I think it's 10 pounds of uh, 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 strength of monofilament. So it's got a 10 pound test. And they have nine bearings on this. Now what's so weird about this particular reel is that normally it, they, I mean these things come for right-handed people. It's just what they do. They come for right-handed people. This is the only spin caster I've ever seen. And, you know, I've seen a lot of reels that you can change it to left-handed. See, it's got a left-handed slot. So you can pull this off and put it in you know, the handle and put it on the other side. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. This is a $140 reel. And you're thinking, Mike, <laughs> it's a spin cast reel. Who would pay 140 bucks for a spin cast reel? Well, anybody who wants quality. And this this Zepco Bullet, I've never held one before. Um, I've I own Zepco. Always have owned Zepco reels. I mean, who hasn't? We've all owned a Zepco reel. And this particular reel is just crazy good. It's just crazy good. They have two pickups 
on the on the um, what a pickup is. It's just a a plunger that goes in and out of the side of the uh, reel. And the nice thing about having two pickups is that you have the the reel actually has faster action. So you can actually set the hook better with a double hookup or do, a double pickup on the reel. So it actually is, well, it's a good look. It's an attractive reel, everybody. It just is an attractive reel. And this is their 30, um, which is their bigger. Um, so it holds more, more line to it. But it is really a very, very nice spool. I mean, reel. And one, one button. Who doesn't want a simple, high quality, simpler cast? I mean, the nice thing about having a one button cast, you know, you could skip it. You could, <laughs> you could get, un you could throw your, your baits underneath the dock. And it's just, well, it's just, it's just really cool. You know, they compete with another company called Proficiency. Uh, with the word fish in the word proficiency. And they have their version. It's the fastest inches per turn I've ever seen on a bait caster of 31 inches. So, and it's, you know, it's, it's you know, this one's, does that because of five to one? This is six and a half to one. And it's only a two inch difference. So don't ask me how that equates into only two inch difference of inches per turn. Now, the, the nice thing about the proficiency, one, it's faster um, and it's lighter um, than the bullet. It's a smaller reel, too. I mean, it's a significantly smaller reel. So it's, it's just significantly smaller. So the good thing about that is, you know, lighter, smaller, you, can, uh, you don't have to worry about fatigue on your wrist so much. It has 12 plus one bearings. So, I mean, basically they put bearings inside the handles and stuff like that. Uh, to be honest, five bearings is all, four or five bearings all person needs. And it, it just gives it a smoother and more fluid um, uh, operation. But these, this is a, it's black with a gold accents on the proficiency. Now what it doesn't do is a right-handed, um, which is what pretty much all bait casters are, spin casters are, they're right-handed, uh, unless you buy a left-handed. But this one doesn't, it doesn't allow you to switch it from one side to the other. This is a $100 um, uh, reel out on the marketplace. And proficiency uh, has made a pretty good name for themselves in this new sniper. Um, it's really a beautiful, beautiful reel. Um, again, it's a spin caster. This is a one handed, one button operation. So in front of me, I've got two of the most beautiful, toughest, fastest reels that you could possibly have, um, in a spin cast. And you, again, you're probably thinking, Mike, why are you even talking about spin cast reels? I go, because it's it's a reel that you've just forgotten about. You really have. I mean, we've been working with spinning reels and bait casters. You know, almost all my rods have bait cast reels on it. And then I've got, of course, some really nice spinning reels. And you sort of stay in those two worlds all the time. Um, let me tell you, if you had this on your rod, okay, not only would you cast better and probably land more fish because of a few things. One, they have good drags and the drag is, you know, the proficiency uses a star drag right on the on the uh, um, on the uh, crank on the handle which is a lot like a regular bait caster being able to adjust your drag on the fly while you're reeling it in and fighting the fish is 
probably my one of my favorite things about a uh, bait caster, and this one's got it. The Zepco puts their drag up on top with a with a, uh, um, a thumb wheel, and again. With a spinning rod, um, you always have to stop spinning and adjust that front screw, you know, the front adjustment. At that point, you can lose your fish. So on the Zepco, you can you could do it with um, your 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 left hand or your right hand, depending on how you got this set up on the fly. The proficiency. You could do it just like a bait caster. It's got a star drag right there, and it's got and it's got a nice little clicking sound to it. I wonder if it's got this clicking. Yeah, both have clicking sounds on their drag. So now, not only are you going to cast more accurately with a spin caster, but you have on the fly while you're fighting the fish, while you're reeling in you can adjust the drag. Again, something you can't do with a spinning reel. Um, you just can't. <laughs> you gotta stop spinning. You're reeling it in to adjust your drag. But in both of these cases, you can do it while fighting the fish. And that is really, really nice. Really nice to be able to um, adjust that. Really. And really nice. I mean, I love star drags because I could, with one hand, I could just tap it and I can go ahead and adjust it. The Zepco, I mean, you've got your hand is on the rod and it's, you know, it's fighting the fish. And I could just go ahead and just use my other thumb while I'm reeling this thing in. Really nice to be able to do that. Again, land more fish. Um, with this. So it was a, a spin caster. I know. I know you're probably telling me. You're probably thinking, why, why, why? Because we forgot about these. And in the meantime that we forgot about these, they got good. They got real good. I mean, this Zepco bullet for $140. Uh, or depending on where you buy it, I don't know. But they, they, you know, they run about 140. This is a great reel. Now it's heavy, so but uh, it's a great reel. And this proficiency for you know a little bit less, um, it's a great reel. <laughs> Smaller, lighter, and it's got a star drag system on it, which I'm used to because I use bait casters. So what a fantastic, you know, thing to rediscover, you know, when we go fishing. So, you know, I thought I'd do a little review on these two uh, because I'm, I forgot. To be honest, I forgot about spin casters. I've been working with bait casters for many years and I graduated from spinning over to the bait caster. You know, a lot of people, when they go to bait casters, they can't go back, but it will frustrate you to no end because everybody backlashes. Everybody backlashes uh, bait caster. I don't care. I got a $450 uh, Shimano Aldebaran. All right? I spoiled myself once. Um, I had to sell a lot of baits <laughs> to get that. It backlashes. Nothing is foolproof. Nothing is foolproof. So I want you guys to sort of look at, you know, if you want something simple or some somebody, somebody who doesn't fish very often and they want, you want to get them something simpler, look at these two. High quality, simple to use, and they'll probably outfish you. <laughs> All right, well, stay tuned. We're going to go into something else <laughs> right after our sponsors. So take care, everybody. We'll see you in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back to Terrible Fishing. Well, since we are on reels, we're going to talk more about reels. Really. I know. Really reels. So I was in... Uh, 
Sportsman's Warehouse uh, yesterday and saw somebody, you know, looking at uh, fishing equipment. So I offered my assistance because there was nobody there to help him. And uh, he was buying a, uh, an outfit for his 18-year-old son. So we went with the spinning setup. So <clears throat> spinning reels. Spinning reels. I know it. So with spinning reels, there are some things that you, 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 you might want to consider. Like in the previous segment, we talked about weight. You know, the difference between the, the bullet and the uh, uh, sniper. And one thing about um, fishing for a, a long day, like I usually do, I'll be out on the lake on the water for 10 hours minimum, uh, just fishing. <laughs> so, and you're just, I mean, you're casting a lot. I mean, you're holding this, unless you're, you're, you're going to use um, a bobber or a, uh, you know, you're going to be bottom fishing or something like that. But if you use lures or something like that, you're always casting. You're always casting the rod. So, what do you need in a spinning reel? Well, spinning reels come in lots of different sizes, typically in hundreds or thousands. So, a 500 is a very small one. We usually use that for um, ice fishing. It's a tiny little spinning reel. And then 1,000s, a little bit bigger, 2,000, 3,000, 4, 5, 6. They go way up. And typically, that's the size of spool, you know, that they have on the spinning reel. And it just holds more line is what it does. But as the spool, the reel gets bigger, it gets heavier. Nice thing about spinning is that it, it, they come typically left-handed retrieve. Uh, but you could flip that that uh, handle over for the right-handed retrieve. I don't know why that is. I really don't, because 80% of human beings are right-handed. But evidently, when it comes to spinning reels, right-handed people like left-handed retrieves. I don't know why. I just don't know why. I don't like it. I always flip that handle over. So, let's talk about size. <laughs> because... You know what? In the end, in you, if you like fishing a lot, you want lighter. And how much line do you really need on a reel? I mean, to be honest, how much line do you really, really need on a reel? You don't need that much. So, I mean, here's a uh, 4,000 in my hand right now. And on the spool, it'll tell you how much line it can actually hold. So this one will hold... 360 yards of braided line, a uh, 20 pound test. And if you want to put 10 pound mono on it, it'll hold 270 yards. Can you cast 270 yards? No, you cannot. None of us can. I mean, that's just a lot of line. Just a lot of line. You don't need that much. I mean, even if you, and so this 4,000 is really for uh, bigger fish, uh, really nice reel. It's a it's a pen, and it's a uh, this one's great for ocean fishing. Um, if you ca if you hook into a really nice fish, you're going to let them run, and you're going to play that fish. And that's really what the extra line is for. The extra line is not for casting; it's for letting a fish run, and you just keeping that thing tight while you're wearing out that fish. My favorite size spinning is two, uh, 2,000 or 200, depending on the manufacturer. And, you know, they, pen, they like to use hundreds instead of thousands, so, uh, or vice versa. So, the, uh, the it, it's just a lighter reel, and I can fish all day long. It's got plenty of line on it that, you know, I'm going to be casting it 60, 70, you know, maybe you know, maybe 50 yards, maybe 50 yards on a long cast, a uh, really long cast. And then, you know, you're going to play that fish while you're pulling them in, but they're not going to take another 50 yards. They just won't because you're pulling them in and letting them run, pulling them in, letting you're basically playing, you know, within that, that casting range. So you're not going to get spooled too often. If you are, good for you. <laughs> good for you. 
So when you look at a spinning reel, look at something, you know, for the average person, a 200 or 300 or 2,000, 3,000, depending on the manufacturer. And those are really the sizes for an all around uh, spinning reel. Anything bigger, you're really shooting for bigger fish and, and bigger environments like the ocean. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, they're heavier, but they're just perfectly good. I mean, they really are. Now, most spinning reels are going to be five or six to one ratios. The higher the ratio, the easier it is for you to land that fish. Because even, you know, this, uh, this pen is a 6.2 to one, which is about as fast as it gets. And it brings in 37 inches per rotation per turn so as you rotate the handle one rotation is going to bring in uh, that many inches per turn and you can I mean 37 is a lot <laughs> that's a lot and that's you know this is a really nice reel so it just happens to be one that be sitting next to me so but I'm a, you know, I love Abu Garcia, I like Pissy Fun, I like um, Daiwa, Shimano's, Pens. When it comes to fit, spinning reels, you really have a hard time finding a bad one unless you go really inexpensive. Um, and that's really where the trick is. You know, you want sealed bearings, something that is durable, especially if you're going to uh, take it to the ocean, because that salt water will get in there and you don't want it to rust up your your reel. So typically after you go to the salt water, you're going to rinse this off with just regular water. You know, um, I usually take my bottled water and I'll, I'll rinse it down, you know, with my bottled water and just make sure that is, I get all that salt water out of it. You really want to do that. So you're also going to look at the bale. You know, the bale is that, 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 the spring that is up front that you open up the, that's called a bell and you cast it and then it flips back down and you're going to look at this and you really want it as much as one piece as you can no gaps in it so your string won't get caught up in it and a good reel is very smooth and has a good lock positive lock open and close open and close and the where you're your line goes in and it feeds it out and you're able to pull it in. This area right here should be very, very smooth. No gap, no gap in that. And you wanna look at that because if there's a gap in there where the line is going to be riding in, in and out of this, uh, the bale, uh, you're just gonna break your line. So you wanna make sure that that works, you know, that inspect it and make sure it's in really, really good shape. So there's a little screw typically, and uh, make sure it's tight, and make sure that it uh, you don't break your line. Now the spool itself, it has little grooves in it, and it may have a little um, rubber ring in the middle of it. And if it does that, you know this is actually braid ready, and typically I, you know, for bigger my bigger fish, I'm always using braid but I will add a liter to it, fluorocarbon. Now, you've heard me talk about fluorocarbon before. Fluorocarbon is completely invisible in water. It has the same refractive properties as, the, um, as water. So the fish cannot see line attached to the, the bait. So it just creates a better illusion in the water so I'm able to get a hookup better. So that's what you want, <laughs> you just want. You want that illusion, so you might get one or two more hookups. Uh, it's not like you won't catch fish without a leader. I mean, you will. I do, all the time. But fluorocarbon is a very good leader, so learning how to add you know, line to line is really good. So basically we do about five feet of leader, and um, we're, this way we, we don't have to reel it completely in and we can still cast it with that with that not not causing a whole lot of issues 
So a spinning reel is, again, a fairly simple thing. What would you spend on a spinning wheel? Yeah, you know, spinning reels are going to be 50 bucks on up. Um, and better, better reels, better gearing, better sealing so they don't rust. And, you know, they're more waterproof. You know, those will run a little bit more money. Uh, so, but if you're a, a freshwater fisherman, uh, that's not as important as somebody who would be going to the beach uh, and, and doing pier fishing or ocean fishing. So seals are, well, you know what I mean, not the, you know, or, 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 you know seals. This is the, 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 the bearings in here. They've got to be sealed up. And some of the um, bodies on spinning reels are sealed up too. So no water can get within the main housing of the body. So that works really well. <laughs> But I want you to, next time you're in the store, you know, the, on the spool or on the body itself, it'll give you all the information that you need in order to shop. Now, I want you to pick them up and make sure that, you know, imagine casting that all day long. Imagine casting it all day long. And that's really what you, you know, first time I took a, a, a 3,000 or 4,000 out, and maybe I'm just a wuss. But the next day, I felt like I had carpal tunnel syndrome in my wrist. And, you know, I do fish a very long time. And I use lures and swim baits and stuff like that. So I'm literally using the rod constantly. Now, you know, trout fishing, you can just toss it out there, fish off bottom, and just wait for the hit. So you're not going to be using the rod very much. So... Think about the type of fishing that uh, you're going to be using. So if you're going to be um, using the reel uh, for, you know, the fishing gear for bass, well, you're going to want a lighter reel. You're just going to. Um, and that's the nice thing about, you know, all these different sizes that are just fine. If you're going to be ocean fishing, well, then you're going to go with a 4,000 or 6,000, um, like this 4,000 here. The, uh, the 6,000 is even bigger. And that's going to be, you want it to be salt water ready and plenty of line for you to go ahead and catch a big fish. I mean, if you want to, if you're going ling cod fishing, which is one of my favorite fish in the ocean to catch, um, that lingcod is going to bite you every step of the way. It's going to feel like you're pulling up a boat anchor and he's going to swim back down. You literally have to wear out a lingcod. Um, you just can't, they're just too strong for you to just reel them up. They're just too strong. Um, and when you get them to the surface, you're going to gaff them <laughs> because their teeth are the most mean looking teeth, razor sharp you know, spikes. I mean, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a really cool looking fish, really cool looking fish. Um, and big giant fat steaks come off of them. They're just fantastic. Fun to catch. Um, and fun to, well, enjoyable to eat. <laughs> now, if you go, you know, I don't, uh, you know, it's been, you know, since the seventies, since I caught a shark, but sharks are, um, really fun to catch. And uh, we used to do blue sharks uh, down in Southern California. And uh, fun fish to catch and, and, and fight and bring them in. You know, you know, sharks are curlygenous fish. They have no bones except for their jaw. Uh, so, piece of cake, you know. You just, <laughs> you just cut them up, you know, into steaks and you're good to go. <laughs> you gotta love sharks. All right, we're going to we're going to be right back. We're going to talk about bait casters. I know. Bait casters, the 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 headache of all reels. So, stay tuned. Welcome back to Terrible at Fishing. Well, we're going to talk about the last category of fishing reels. And it's probably the most frustrating um and yet the coolest <laughs> fishing reel that you could buy. And that's a bait caster. Now, I know. 
Mike, we live in trout country. Trout people do not use bait casters. Well, I'm a bass fisherman in trout country, but I will tell you that yes, trout fishermen can use a bait caster. Now, why do trout people not use bait casters? Well, that's because trout lures and baits and jigs and spinners are very small and light. And bait casters typically, up until recently, could not cast them reliably. You just couldn't do it. I mean, you try to cast a 16th ounce on most bait casters and it'll backlash on you. And it just won't, won't travel far. Now, what's the difference between a bait caster and a spinning reel? Well, it's weird. This is really weird because the word spinning mean you know, you would think that the spool would spin, but spinning reels, the spool doesn't spin. It's the bail that spins, not the reel, not the spool. Well, with a bait caster, the spool spins. So it needs weight in order for it to pull the line out off of the uh, spool and causing it to spin. So a lot of people, when it comes to trout fishing, they don't use bait casters because in order to unspool the line, <laughs> okay, it's got to have weight. Well, what has happened in the last few years? It's something called BFS, Bait Finesse Systems. BFS. And a BFS reel has a spool that is extremely light and it requires very little weight to spin it. Well, yeah, you know, in the last segment I did kind of give away one of my BFS reels and it's a Shimano Aldebaran. Now, Shimano, they coined the term and trademarked the term BFS. So nobody else in the industry is allowed <laughs> to use the term BFS. Now, they can use bait finesse, but they can't use BFS, bait finesse systems. They can use um, finesse or what, you know, der derivatives of it. If a company is using the term BFS and they're not Shimano, they're infringing upon trademark. And I would not purchase that particular brand because they're dishonest. Um, so, I, you know, easy way to um, to do that, you know, figure that out. BFS is only for Shimano's. The Aldebaran or the Calcutta are basically, they're, they're kind of the industry benchmark. So everybody is compared to the Shimano Aldebaran or Calcutta. How much are these things? <laughs> well, those are 400 bucks, you know, typically. But you can get some really nice uh, uh, bait finesse um, bait casters. You know, 60 bucks, 120 bucks, 200 bucks. So if you're a trout fisherman and you want to go with a, a bait caster, well, eh, it's going to run you a little bit of money. So the... Why, why, why do, do we go with bait casters? Because we want a one-handed operation. Spinning reels are two-handed operations. Flipping up, open the bait, you know, the bale, casting it, closing the bale, you know, reeling it in. And then you have to stop reeling in order to set your drag, you know, tighten it up or loosen it up so you don't lose the fish. Well, with spin casters in the first segment, on reels and then the bait casters which is this segment you could do it on the fly bait casters have a star drag right right on the handle and so you can adjust the drag loosen or tighten it right as you're fighting the fish and that is a big deal when it comes to landing fish now bait casters can be very very frustrating now on my youtube channel i have a really good tutorial it's only like seven minutes long on how to cast without a backlash. Now, mind you, you're always 
the best of fishermen, including myself, um, with great experience on bait casters. We still get backlashes once in a while. Sometimes we get get a little excited. We're casting it. We don't. We forget to make the adjustments, and uh, nah, we get, you know, it happens. It happens to all of us. So, with a bait caster, it takes a lot of practice on using it. But once you get it, you got it. And backlashes are rare. Um, I mean, you could backlash a spinning rod. You could backlash a spin caster. You could backlash anything. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, and scare you away from bait, bait casters. Bait casters are really, really good. And once you get, once you buy a bait caster, a good one, all right, a good one, with a good braking system, um, those are, well, you'll just get spoiled to death. Now, what's a braking system? Well, because the spool turns, because it turns, it would it requires a braking system within the hub of the spool. There are basically two different braking systems. There's the magnetics ones. Usually you have five or six or 10 magnets inside there and it, it controls the speed of the uh, braking and you can adjust the magnets with a little knob and to create a bigger gap or a lesser gap in order to increase or decrease the brakes. There's also one called centrifugal. Uh, centrifugal throws out pins as you um, cast it and it has typically they have four pins and you can adjust the pins in order to adjust the brakes. Some combine both, like the Shimano SLX XT. Um, it has both braking systems in it. It's a really good reel. And some magnet ones do very, very good. I have uh, two Abu Garcia um, Max Pros and beautiful reel. It's a pearl white, it's gorgeous. And boy, it is just a, a, a darling of a reel. And you can get a really good, you know, the Mac, the Abu Garcia, I think, are 80 bucks. And it would probably be the lowest priced one I would tell you to get. Um, and uh, it's a great reel. And the SLX XT, um, very good reel. I think it's like 120 bucks. And then if you're really wanting a BFS reel, <laughs> And you want to run? You want to cast those five gram lures? Uh, you're gonna go with an Alder Baron. <laughs> it's just some more money. <laughs> now, one thing about uh, nice thing about bait casters too is bait casters have high, they have a, a variety of gear ratios, anywhere from five to one to ten to one. I know. 10 to 1. Um, why a high gear ratio? Why is it necessary? Well, inches per turn or gear, these gear ratios that we've been talking about in all of these is that when a fish, you hook a fish, sometimes they swim towards you. Towards you. And they're trying to close the gap between you and them creating slack in the line so they can use their tongue and remove the hook from their cheek or their lip. Yes, fish have tongues. And they're very good at removing hooks by creating slack. Sometimes they jump out of the water and they shake their heads in order to create that slack, that, that momentary uh, you know, happening of slack so they can spit out the hook. So this is why higher gear ratios are nice. So you can keep that line tight no matter which direction a fish is actually swimming. Uh, my, so, I mean, your Goldilocks gear ratio is gonna be a seven to one. That's kind of your Goldilocks. My Aldebaran's got an 8.9 to one. <laughs> so it's really weird because, uh, you know, I will be fishing with my Aldebaran most of my time. I love light tackle. And then when I, I switch rods to a different setup, 
I'm at, you know, a six to one or seven to one. And now my hand is just turning the crank faster and in order to create more, keep that, that tight line on the fish. It's weird because, I mean, one thing about, you know, the type of fishing that I do is that I have lots of different rods for different setups, different weights, different types of fish. And so I have to remind myself what I've got in my hand in order to play the fish properly and to understand, you know, I've got four pound test on this and not 25 pound test, which I have on my extra heavy, you know, that's got 25 pound test. And, you know, I just want to make sure that I've got, you know, I don't overplay or underplay my fish um, in when I switch my rods. But I would definitely, bait casting, bait casting is something you have to get used to. But once you get used to it, you your accuracy of cast is better. Very much like a spin caster. Um, I mean, you just, I mean, it's a one-handed, one finger, you know, boom, you know, you press the button. And one thing about a bait caster, though, you have to ride your thumb on top of the spool really lightly in order to, it's your best break, is your thumb. Well, with spin caster, you don't have that. So you just cast it out there. But with one-handed, you can focus on your spot and pretty much nail it every single time. And then when you, when you turn the handle, it, it locks the spool. And now you're ready to fight the fish. As Soon as any, you know, with all three types, spin caster, spinning, and bait caster, as soon as that bait hits the water, lock it. Because fish will hit that bait upon the drop. So sometimes, I mean, you've got to be ready to set that hook. So keep an eye, you know, what you're going to keep a visual eye on your bait. As soon as it hits the water, you're going to turn the handle or flip the bail in order to be ready for a hit. Because if you don't, they're going to hit it and they'll spit it right back out. <laughs> you just don't want them. You know, fish have tongues. And some of them, like bass, they're really smart. They'll actually use a piece of wood in the water in order to leverage that hook out of their lip. Bass are smart. They're just smart fish. So can you use a bait caster for trout fishing? Absolutely. Will it cost you more money for very small light baits? Yes, it will. But you will get spoiled. You really will. Now, is it necessary? No. A spin caster or a spinning reel is a perfectly good um, op option for you. The spin caster, probably even more so. You know, the, uh, you know, that proficiency we talked about because it's got the star drag right on the handle, same as um, all bait casters. And, one, and that's a really nice reel. Now, bait casters come in either right-handed or left-handed. They do not swap sides. So you have to you know, you know what, what is, where's your reeling hand? Is it your left hand or your right hand? Uh, mine's always my right hand, so I can't do left-handed. So you got to keep that in mind, too. And bearings and quality is everything. Maintenance is higher on a uh, bait caster, so you're going to be maintaining it a little bit more with lubrication. But I hope this, you know, today, this week's um, show helps you out a little bit in picking a reel. And hopefully, when next time you go to, you know, the uh, sporting goods store, and um, you don't, you don't necessarily have a, uh, a, a clerk to help you, a salesman to help you, today's show will help you pick a, spin, a uh, reel. And uh, go to my YouTube channel. And like we always say, toad in, toad out. Always leave the place that you fish better than when you found it. Tight lines, everybody. <laughs>